What's your view on this? Should the government reduce further the isolation period? They've already cut it last week from 10 days to seven. Do you think they should go further still and take it down to five days like they're doing in the States? At the CBI in the summer, we released a document talking about living with the virus. We updated that in December and said, it is now about living with the variants. We said, how can we stop uh, restrictions, lockdowns by following certain measures, including, for example, using um, mass testing as opposed to mass isolation. And that's something I personally fought for going back to August 2020. The government eventually listened, the CBI got behind it, and now we have some of the best lateral flow testing availability in the world, where it's shown time after time, whether it's Oxford University, UCL, Harvard, have proven if you do regular lateral flow tests, it picks up individuals who can then, if necessary, isolate, and the rest can carry on going to school, carry on going to university, carry on going to work. So that is Sir John Bell, Professor Sir John Bell, has said just now that we need to continue using those lateral flow tests as much as possible, including reducing the isolation period. So I personally thought it was fantastic news when Sajid Javid announced that the isolation has gone down from 10 days to seven days, where if you test negative on day six and seven, with lateral flow tests, you can go back to work. Uh, and the Americans, of course, have now gone down to five days. And there are those who say the Americans and scientists have said it is safe to do that. And that is for asymptomatic individuals, that they can, after five days, asymptomatic individuals can stop their isolation. They carry on wearing a mask for a further five days. Uh, if the Americans are able to do it, I'm sure our scientists are looking at it and our government is looking at it as well. And would you like them to go for it? We have got to go for it low an isolation period as is safe to do, because the disruption that is being caused at the moment is huge. If you can imagine businesses, what we have suffered throughout this pandemic with periods of lockdown, where businesses have literally closed, in my own business, with, with Cobra Beer, we supply 7,000 restaurants. They've been shut for months on end. And this December, where restaurants, hotels, bars, they rely on a huge proportion of their profits to be made in the lead up to Christmas, was ruined because of the Omicron virus. So we've had enormous disruption. We've got to stop that disruption as much, much as possible. We've got to stop the effect on lives and livelihoods as much as possible. Just given a chance, business rebounded very quickly. Our economy suffered one of the worst in the world in 2020 by dropping by almost 10%. We're still not back to pre-pandemic levels. I know that this economy, given a chance, we can bounce back very strongly and very quickly. And if it is safe to do so, we should be allowed to do so. And businesses have gone to huge lengths to make their premises COVID safe, whether it's restaurants, whether it's offices. Enormous expense and time has been spent on that. We'll do everything we can. Uh, and if there's a little disruption as possible, that's got to be good for the country and good for the economy as long as it's safe to do so. South Africa, where you are now, did introduce a policy just a few days ago of no isolation for asymptomatic individuals. They've now already reversed that. Is that a sign that it's a really tough call? It's a big decision that countries around the world are wrestling with, getting this balance between stopping the spread of the virus, uh, keeping people safe, but also keeping industry and the economy going? I've spoken to experts over here in South Africa, and there is still confusion about exactly what is going to happen now. But on the 23rd of, of this month, they announced that it would no longer be necessary to isolate uh, for, and, and, and they, because they've discovered that their hospitals, the ICUs, are, are no, nowhere near as full as they were with the Delta and the Beta variant. People who were in hospital for Delta and Beta for eight days have been in hospital for three days with Omicron. The ventilators are hardly being used. So they found that the hospitalizations and deaths are much, much lower. On the other hand, there is no running away from it. This is hugely infectious. And, and so they decided, from a practical point of view, to change the rules. Now, we don't know exactly what it's going to be now. It will be announced officially soon. But I think the, way, the direction things are heading in now is recognizing that we've got to live with the variants going forward in a safer manner and practical a manner as possible using lateral flow tests using our world-leading booster program, which is fantastic. We can protect our citizens, our businesses, with two lines of defense. One is the vaccines. Next, you have the lateral flow testing. The third that now people are finally talking about, we've been calling out for this since January, 
is having repurposed new treatments and the antivirals, for example, the Pfizer antiviral has shown in trials to reduce deaths and hospitalizations by 89%. Once that becomes available, that is a game changer in that you treat people, they take the tablets for five days and you reduce the hospitalization and deaths. So the combination of those things, I think, is looking very optimistic ahead. We've got to get through this period right now. Uh, you talk about the importance of mass testing and the, the valuable contribution to that made by lateral flow tests. Are you concerned at all that we are getting warnings from pharmacists today about the difficulty of, of getting hold of lateral flows in some areas, uh, patchy supply problems uh, currently? Does that worry you when everyone's building up to go back to work after the Christmas and New Year period? Absolutely. The government has got to do everything it can to have these lateral flow tests freely available. Just earlier this month, we ran out, and that is not a good situation to be in because the cost of these lateral flow tests, if you put that cost into context of the billions it costs when you restrict the economy, even with plan B, let alone a lockdown, those costs, it costs us 400 billion pounds to save the economy and businesses and livelihoods throughout this pandemic. The cost of having a huge supply of freely available lateral flow tests to businesses and to people in their homes or to pick up from pharmacies is the cost benefit is off the scales. <laughs> you just must have as many lateral flow tests uh, as we can because they are shown now time and again to be reliable uh, and helping to identify people who have COVID. And we must use them to the maximum. The government must make them freely available and continue to have them freely available going forward, at least into the spring. Lord Billamoria, thanks so much for your time. Interesting to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you.